Hello, my name is Nils Gessert. I am with the Hamburg University of Technology and I'm going to present you our work on 4D deep learning for multiple sclerosis lesion activity segmentation. I will start off with a short introduction on lesion activity segmentation, which is quite different than normal lesion segmentation. Multiple sclerosis, in short MS, is characterized by lesions in the central nervous system. For monitoring disease progression, we usually take two MRI scans acquired a few months apart and check how lesions have changed over time, for example in this region. If we zoom in, we can observe that the lower lesion stayed the same, while the upper lesion appears to have grown in size over time. If we mark this enlargement of the lesion with the color, we obtain what we call lesion activity. As a result, the key difference to normal lesion segmentation is that we do not only differentiate between high-intensity lesions and background, but also between old and new lesion material. And of course, we need to process two instead of one volume. Here you see our previous approach for the problem where we use a unit-like 3D CNN with two encoder paths. Each path receives the volume for independent processing. At the decoder, we fuse both volumes and decode the joint representation into a prediction of lesion activity. Now we had the idea, what if we actually use more than one baseline scan? A typical MS patient will have a lot of scans taken. Can we also make use of all those scans that had been acquired even further back? Intuitively, this could provide a more extended and consistent baseline for differentiating between old and new lesion material in the current follow-up scan. Of course, this also means that we do not process 3D volumes, but 4D spatio-temporal sequences instead, which represents a significant challenge. An easy approach would be to just add more encoder paths for the additional volumes. We came up with a more elegant solution. We propose an encoder convolutional gated recurrent unit decoder architecture to deal with this kind of segmentation problem. We use an encoder with 3D convolutional layers that processes all volumes in parallel, similar to the previously shown architecture. Then, at the decoder, we employ convolutional gated recurrent units to perform temporal aggregation across all time points. We apply the strategy across multiple scales with the unit long-range connections. The convolutional gated recurrent unit outputs its last state for further processing. In this way, the decoder receives a compact 3D spatial representation that is then upsampled into a segmentation map that depicts lesion activity in the current follow-up scan. An advantage of this approach is that an arbitrary number of time points can be used. Considering that patients will often have a different number of scans taken, this is particularly useful for application. We evaluate our proposed method on a data set with 44 MS cases and 3 time points per case. This means that we have a follow-up scan, a baseline scan and one additional history scan further from the past. All the volumes are flare images that have a varying size and spatial resolution. Here you see our results on our test set. We compare the normal encoder-decoder with several encoder paths to our encoder convolutional GIU decoder architecture. For both methods we consider two and three time points. In terms of metrics we consider the dice score, lesion-wise true positive and lesion-wise false positive rate. Lesions are determined by 3D connector components in the binarized prediction maps. We can observe that our proposed architecture performs best across all metrics when using three time points. Interestingly, the architecture also performs very well when using only two time points, in particular in terms of the lesion-wise false positive rate. Using a third time point appears to be helpful, but only with our new architecture. When simply adding a third encoder path to the old model, we see a decline in performance in terms of the dice coefficient and also the lesion-wise false positive rate. This indicates that using more historical scans for lesion activity segmentation could indeed be helpful, but it also requires an appropriate architecture for processing the 4D data. For future work, this study could be extended to more time points and a larger data set to confirm our first initial insights. This concludes my talk and I would like to thank you for your attention. If you have any further questions, you can, for example, send me an email.